Imagine a world where you are part of a community that sees you for all that you bring and propels you to become your very best self. A world where everyone is valued for what they bring and everyone gets the support they need. Saver Exchange brings this dream to reality by empowering individuals, communities and organizations with the right tools and resources to change the world. We do this by organizing people near and far around a goal or project and bringing them together and measuring their success. Our data analytical reports will provide information to support transparency and critical needs in today's world. The SaverX app acts as a secure bridge to multiple communities, including those defined by you, and allows everyone within their community to contribute time through service and request help for themselves. Members can also donate service credits, money, or goods back to their community. Go to www.saverxapp.com to learn more and start your Saver community today. Welcome. Hello, everybody. This event is brought to you by Seva Exchange. Give what you love and get what you need to get things done. Reinventing volunteerism by providing an easy to use web and mobile platform to discover one's passions through community service and to seek help when in need. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Thank you so much. I hope you are ready to dream big today. This is Creating a Vision for Your Future, and I am Kimberly Weefling, and delighted to be here with my wonderful colleagues from Silicon Valley Alliances. Yvonne, which I'm going to pass this to Yvonne and have her introduce herself. Catch something. Hello, everyone. I'm Yvonne Burton, an associate with um, Silicon Valley Alliance, and I'm happy to be here with you today um, and with Kimberly and um, Kathy to bring our session, um, our Dream Big program to you. And I'm going to now pass to Kathy. Here you go. Thank you, Yvonne. I'm Kathy Turner. I'm part of Silicon Valley Alliance. And um, I'm so delighted to be here. Um, and I've taken this course before and it is a, it is a fun, time you are going to enjoy yourself and you are going to think big and think creative to creatively and your dreams will come true That's and when she great. says fun what does she mean she means fun people exciting yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes we offer a full day version of this workshop every month so just reach out I'm Kimberly at weefling.com. It's easy to find me. Uh, if you don't know where I am, just call the police. They should know. I'll be creating a ruckus somewhere. All right. I'm going to just share my screen briefly. We're not going to use a lot of PowerPoints today because I don't feel the power and I don't see the points. But I'm just going to show you a couple of things that might be helpful to you. All right. Creating a vision for your future. It is an amazing experience. I first wanted to give you a little quiz. Now let's just see, using the annotation mode, if you can figure out who said these things on the left-hand side. Each one on the left was said by someone on the right. Now, Yvonne knows how to use annotate. Why don't you tell them, Yvonne, how to do that? Right, so if you look at the top of your screen, you'll see a green bar. It says you are viewing Kimberly's screen. To the right is a view options drop down. Click it and you'll see an option called annotate. When you select annotate, it will display the annotate menu bar. Select an option like text or stamp and then click onto the whiteboard or the slide and annotate. For example, I'm gonna put a star next to A. Okay. There you go. You now, who do you think said Louis Pasteur's theory of germs is a ridiculous fiction? Come on, take a guess, people. Hmm. Who said Gauguin is a decorator tainted with insanity? <laughs> what famous person went bankrupt several times before he built a world-renowned theme park, was also fired, 
fired by a newspaper editor for lack of ideas. I want to see some guesses in here. Kathy and Yvonne are going to play along too, because they haven't seen this. This is something I just sprung on them today. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, my favorite. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible. This is one of my favorites because it was said in 1895, less than 10 years later, airplanes were invented. And by the way, in 1895, when this was said, that's a big hint, people, there were birds. Birds are heavier than air. <laughs> Okay, you probably guessed it. It's pretty easy to guess. That was D, yes. Lord Kelvin, British mathematician, physicist, and president of the British Royal Society said heavier than air flying machines are impossible. Now notice he didn't say difficult, may rely on technology I can barely comprehend and may take hundreds or thousands of years to develop Oh, no, that's not how these experts talk. They say things like, it's impossible. Now, let's go through this one by one. Yes, it was Walt Disney who went bankrupt several times before he built the famous Disney World and Disneyland. Oh, my goodness. And... Oh, uh, the, the inventor of the radio and holder of dozens of patents in radio said, while theoretically and technically television may be feasible, commercially and financially, I consider it an impossibility, a development of which we need waste little time dreaming. Now, this is how these people talk saying it's impossible. Come on, let's take some guesses here. Let's take some more guesses here. I'm not going to give you the answers. You have to be willing to take a risk, be wrong, make mistakes, fail forward. Oh, my goodness. Now, the New York Times, a very respected newspaper, said when they talked about Robert Goodard's work on rockets, that it would be impossible to have space flight. They said, he does not know the relation between action and reaction and the need to have something better than a vacuum, the vacuum of space, against which to react. He seems to lack the basic knowledge ladled out daily in high schools. In 1921, less than a hundred years later, we had space flight. No, no, it wasn't even 100 years. It was like 40 years later, we had space flight. 50 years later, we were walking on the moon. <clears throat> I just want you to see how dangerous it is for people to say things are impossible. Well, it looks like together we may have this all figured out. I guess B is the only one left. So you better put it down there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I want you to just look back on history and see how many things have been considered impossible that ultimately happened. Now I'm going to stop sharing this and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to think for a whole 60 seconds and type into the chat. And I want to include all of us. I'm going to, do, I'm going to play along too. I want you to think for 60 seconds what seems impossible for you? That your family would worry if you said it. Your friends would roll their eyes. Your colleagues would laugh and tell you you're unrealistic. What seems impossible? But if it were possible, if it were to happen in a year, 10 years, 50 years, it would be amazing. What seems impossible? But if it were possible, would transform your life for the better. 60 seconds.
We're going to type that into the chat. Because the first step in achieving what seems impossible is to say it. And I don't want you to be on mute. I want you to be involved, engaged as much as possible. All right, I put mine in there to a risk. Oh, it seems ridiculous. <laughs> if what you put in the chat doesn't seem ridiculous, out of reach, if you put it in there and you say, I have no idea how to do it, that's exactly what we want. Because if you already know how, that dream is not big enough. Okay. <laughs> Helen, Helen knows how. Now, I want to just... Look and see if Yvonne, you could read out some of those without saying who said it. Okay, so I am 11 years into the process of wellness weavers. And this event proves that we are very close to the full bloom that will co-create the systems that work for everyone. Wonderful. Okay, and then we have, I'm a part of a thriving and abundant intentional community a family of friends sharing our excesses and enjoying our lives together. And one more, um, buying my dream home less than a block from the beach in Santa Cruz and being able to pay cash outright. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's high five each other on those. Now, let's just check something very interesting. When you heard your own dream, did you think, uh, but when you heard other people's, were you thinking a little different? Did something different happen? Kathy, what happened when you heard other people's versus when you heard your own? Oh, I, I thought, yeah, <laughs> they can do it, yes. <laughs> exactly. When I heard other people's dreams, I thought, well, that's not so hard. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it. A and I even have some ideas how to help you. <laughs> Now, that is the secret. I'm going to just show you a couple more slides, and I'm not going to do it in slideshow mode because we're not trying to make this into a lecture, but the number one thing that stops us from doing things that could lead to our dreams coming true is thinking it's impossible. And you know what? Impossible protects us. Impossible protects us from disappointment. Impossible protects us from failure. And look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> Impossible is often only a measure of difficulty. But let me tell you, oh man, it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. And look at, look at what you're facing. When you're on the path to your goals and dreams, you're going to face people who care about you, who love you, who don't want you to be disappointed. And they're going to spare you that by crushing your dreams, so by funny. making sure you know. Let's hear some reaction. Do you find that happens? Definitely. Helen, it's definitely. They want to protect you. And now let's just remember that the yeah. word impossible, what is the word impossible have contained in it? I'm possible. Let's all say it together. I'm possible. That's oh, what I was yes. just writing in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> now, I Ellen is right I'm with possible. It. <laughs> I will tell you a little bit about my past. I was educated as a physicist. I have a master's degree in physics. I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry and physics. I worked for 10 long years in engineering and you know what my engineering friends call this kind of talk? Crazy. Like, crazy. Thank you. <laughs> what else do you think they call it? <laughs> High in the sky. High in the sky. Thank you. And they call it the touchy feely crap. And I'm sorry, but this is the reason that people like Lord Kelvin says heavier than air machines are impossible even when there are birds that are heavier than air. 
So we're going to learn a different way. But first, I want to remind us all how we kill ideas. So you're going to have a chance <laughs> to go and kill some ideas together. So what we're going to demonstrate, Yvonne and I will demonstrate how you kill an idea. So let's do this. Let's say we're going to plan to make the whole world happy. We're going to have a happiness celebration a year from now. And we're going to plan the party. And there is unlimited budget, unlimited resources, every kind. Now, in the first stage, we're going to kill every idea. And we're going to use one of our favorite ways to kill ideas. When someone says an idea, we're going to say, yes, but. And then tell why that idea isn't practical, isn't reasonable, isn't realistic. And then we're going to tell our idea, which is obviously better. And then the other person is going to kill that. In fact, let's do a round robin. You'll get the idea very fast. I'll pass to Yvonne first, and she'll kill my idea and give another idea. She'll pass to Kathy. Kathy will give another idea, will kill her idea with yes, but, and then give another idea. And then Kathy, you pass to Helen or whoever else you want to. I think we have, oh, you got it. You got that got globe. That's good. We got the globes. All right. Now, we're going to have this party a year from now. Let's all have this party on the moon. It will be exciting and fun. Yvonne, what do you think? Yes, but the moon, how are we all going to get there? It's so expensive. Why don't we just have it virtually? Kathy? <sighs> yes, but, you know, sometimes the internet can be wonky. Why don't we just get together at the beach? Helen. Um, yes, but. Yes, but. I really want to go out in space. So. Oh, Helen, yeah. you can't even kill ideas. You're so oh, sorry. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the, the lunar landing was faked. Oh, ouch, that hurt. <laughs> Good. Okay, now. Dead idea. <laughs> now, you see, we spent a good minute killing that idea. We didn't make any progress. Zero progress. So let's just analyze. Because we hear this all the time, don't we? Yes, but. Oh, yes, but. Let's see. Do you think Kimberly is an intelligent person? Yes, but. Do you think Kimberly is attractive? Yes, but. What does yes, but mean? Shout it no. out. It means <laughs> no. no. So when we say yes, but to somebody, we're not helping them. We're telling them no. Now let's make a small change with a huge impact. Together, and we'll do it all four of us together. We're not going to go into breakouts for this. We're small. We're going to do and pass to whoever you want. We're going to keep going for a whole two whole minutes. <clears throat> we're going to say yes and. We're going to say an idea, and the next person we pass to is going to say yes and and add another idea. Pass yes and another idea. And what about all those objections, those practical, realistic objections? Save them for later, because after we have a whole bunch of ideas and we expand and explode the possibilities, then we can kill the ideas. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't worry. We're not going to do all of them. We're going to have to choose later. But if you combine idea generation with evaluating and selecting ideas, you will kill every idea that's created. In fact, there's a name for it and it's called premature convergence. Premature convergence on a suboptimal solution. Now, I think ladies, we can agree that anything with the word premature in it cannot be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, good. <laughs> ah! Okay. We hope we don't have to edit that part out. <laughs> now let's uh, plan the party. The whole world has become happy and we're planning the party. And I say, we're going to go into the heart of Africa and we're going to have an amazing dance festival where we learn 
tribal African dance. Yes, but I wanted to plan that party to the moon. Now Helen, now Helen wants to say yes, but now when we're in the middle of creating. Yes. Because I want to say yes, and let's oh. get a physician, I mean, a, a physicist and a nurse on that team for planning it. Oh, and Helen. a gal that's oh. tacky, and a gal who wants to own a beach house. Then Don't we'll make have me mute place you. to take off <laughs> with our float right. plane. All right. <laughs> We're going to do this, Helen. We're going to do the yes and, and we'll come back to your objections <laughs> later. I personally love to go to the dark side. I love it. We'll go there soon. All right. So, to Kathy, Kathy, yes and. Yes and. We'll do a safari while we're there. Woohoo! Helen. Yes, and I have lack of sleep from last night. And I'm still thinking about making that moon the party. Let's possible. go to the moon I after forgot the what you I said we wanted to do next. Is it going to Africa? Yeah. Let's Why? go. Yes. Let's go to and the moon after Africa. Why not? We'll all get on. Yes, the and moon. let's make sure that it's an eco green event. Yes. yes. Oh, totally. We'll only be wearing banana leaves. That's all <laughs> we'll wear. It's totally a, an eco friendly event. Yvonne, what else? Mm, yes. And let's have the Maasai tribe perform some special dancing for us. Yeah. That is really cool. They're drummers and they're dancers. It's like connecting with the cosmos, the way they move and engage. Great wow. ideas. Back to you, Kimberly. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So you see, what a different experience. Now, we're not going to do all of those things. We're not going to do them all right away or at the same time. What we are gonna do is have much more in the way of ideas that we can choose from. So I will tell you a little story about why we should be careful about killing ideas. It's called the bears and the honeypots. There were some people up in Alaska working on how to clear the ice off of the power lines because the ice would build up and break the power lines. So, they were brainstorming for hours and some of them were getting impatient saying, oh, this is ridiculous. And they were kind of losing patience with the whole process. And one guy said, okay, how about this? We put a big pot of honey at the top of the power poles. And then the bears, there's lots of bears up there. They'll climb up there, they'll shake the poles and that'll break the ice off the power lines. And another guy goes, hey, wait a second. What if I'm up there putting up that pot of honey? And a bear starts crawling up while I'm up there. And I'm going to be trapped. And then the guy goes, oh, don't worry. We'll fly a helicopter low overhead. And the downdraft from the helicopter will be pretty strong. It'll scare that bear down. And another fellow goes, hey, wait a second. Is that downdraft from the helicopter really that strong? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he said. Is it strong enough to break the ice off of the power lines? <gasps> oh, yeah. And that's how they did it. They flew the helicopter low over the power lines to break the ice off. And they would have never gotten to that amazing breakthrough if they had killed that honeypot idea in the first 10 seconds, like we so quickly do. Now, let me just give you one more example. <laughs> <laughs> Why you would never want to listen to people. Now, what, what's your reaction? Honeypots, bears and honeypots. Would you have had that conversation? Would you have killed that idea right away? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> I would have gone up, signed up to go on the helicopter and climb down the ladder and put the hot honey pot on there. Only in, if the helicopter was taking you to the moon afterward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do a simple thing here. I'm going to ask you to do a very simple thing. And I want you, don't type your answer into the chat until I say go, but I'm gonna share my screen. You are gonna count the number of Fs in this sentence, okay? Silently, just count them, give you 20 seconds. All right, I know you wanna check twice, just making sure. All right. Now, get ready. When I say go, type the number of Fs into the chat. Are you ready? Go. 
Hit return. Let's see. What are your answers? Okay, we have three. We have six. Wow. We have six. Okay. Wow. We can't even agree on the number of Fs in a sentence. <laughs> now, people, I think we should be able to agree on how many Fs are in the sentence. I'm going to put it right there in the chat for you. Feature films, there's two at least, are the result of, of has an F in it. Years of has another F in it. Scientific has an F in it with the experience of years. Yes, I think we can all agree there are six Fs. <laughs> now, people, I have done this exercise with thousands of highly educated, experienced professionals all <laughs> over the world. And most people say two, three, maybe four. A few say five and once in a while, like one out of 20 people says six. The only reason that me, <laughs> I got it and Kathy got it right because we've seen this a hundred times before. <laughs> now, let me give you the good news, especially for Helen. People who only count two or three Fs, it's because you're so smart. Because our brains are filtering out so much. We look at the world, we got 10 million bits per second coming into our brains. How many do you think are raised to conscious awareness? Just guess, put in the chat, out of 10 million bits a second, our brains are taking in from all of our senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, taste. How many bits per second is our brain consciously aware of? Oh boy, yeah, it's a pretty small number. I have heard 20 to 40, 20 to 40 bits out of 10 million. Now, what does our brain use as the criteria? Which bits? What do you think? Yvonne, how does our brain decide which things are important to raise to conscious awareness? Okay, let me give you an example. Suppose you buy a new car. Anyone buy a new car recently? I know, I know, things have been tough. Who's buying new cars these days? If you buy a new car, you're driving down the, the street, what kind of cars do you notice? <laughs> Ooh, the See? ones that I like. <laughs> the ones that I like, I just bought. Maybe it's even the same color as mine. Now, my mother, God bless her soul, recently purchased a Tesla for me for my birthday. And now when I drive down the street, you know what I see everywhere. I see Teslas everywhere and a lot of them are the same color as my car. Now, <laughs> I did not notice Teslas before, but boy, I noticed everyone. I even waved to the other drivers. <laughs> now, this is a hint. What our brain needs in order to help our dreams come true. If we put a clear and vivid image in our brains of the fabulous future that we want to create for ourselves, when something crosses our field of vision that's aligned with that dream, we're gonna notice it. We're gonna pay attention to it. And it's gonna happen in a way that never would have happened if we didn't dare to dream. So it's like we are fish swimming in an ocean of water, but fish can't see water. Fish are blind to water. We are swimming in an ocean of possibilities and opportunities, and we're completely blind to it because we have not dared to put in our brain a dream that our brain can use to do pattern recognition and match us with opportunities that cross our path. So I'm going to give you a chance to say yes and to your dreams. We're going to do a little bit deeper kind of yes and, and this is going to be generous listening. We are going to listen to your dreams and goals generously. Now, you might think, oh, that's going to be really hard. No, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. I'm going to show you just a little bit of background information, and I'm happy to share these slides if you just reach out to me. We're going to do what's called having a thinking partner. What does that mean? It means, well, first of all, everything we do depends for its quality on the thinking we do first. And the key, the secret, is that the quality of our thinking is directly related to the quality of attention that we receive while thinking. That is that generous listening to each other. And what does generous listening to do? It, instead of crushing all the ideas like yes, but does, it expands the conversation. 
in ways that I have experienced magic. I have been doing a workshop called Creating a Vision for Your Future every year since 1996. I have a record of impossible things in my own life that have happened that I never imagined could happen, but somebody said yes to me. Someone said, oh, come on, Kimberly, sure, why not? Just hallucinate for a half an hour and tell me about that fabulous future. I started writing them all down. A year later, five years later, 10 years later, it all happened. And I'm like, my goodness. Somebody believed for me what I couldn't believe for myself. And here's what it sounds like. Four magic words. When someone says, hey, I have this big, crazy dream, an idea. And you're thinking that's the stupidest thing I ever heard. It's never going to happen. It's unrealistic. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. I want you to say this. Interesting. Tell me more. Let's just all try that together, <laughs> shall we? One, two, three. Interesting. Interesting. Tell me, tell me tell more. Me more. Uh, inside tell me you, more, you, tell me more. Oh, tell me more. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. That's great. Now, generous listening can be a little more complicated. Interesting, tell me more is my go-to phrase. That's a great idea. Now, what if you don't think it's a great idea? What should you do? Just be quiet. Just pretend. Just smile. You can't even count the number of Fs in a sentence. How could you possibly evaluate the quality of their dream, their idea. So you just, for two or three minutes, just shine them on, smiling and nodding and saying, sure, why not? That's a great idea. Tell me more. Say more about that. What would that make possible? What else? Go on, continue. Mm -hmm. The two things you must not say are how. How will you do that? How? I don't even know what exactly I'm doing. I don't know how. And why? Why would you want that? Why? 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 It makes us defensive people. So we're going to do what we call possibility speaking. And this is, again, the divergent part of creating our fabulous futures where we are allowed to dream and dream big and know it won't all possibly happen. Maybe better things, maybe different things will happen. This conversation will happen. Though. So we're going to do it together. Let's just see if I can put these into the chat so that we can refer to them. We're going to do generous listening. We're gonna use our go-to phrases. Interesting, tell me more. That's a great idea. Say more about that. What would make possible? Or you can just go like this. <laughs> now let's try to look. Let's go to the dark side. Let's physically look completely disinterested, all right? Just practice. I literally saw somebody listening yesterday like this on Zoom, like this for at <laughs> least 45 seconds. I couldn't imagine how the speaker even continued. All right, so we have to listen with our whole being, our face, our hands. Our... Now let's pretend we're really fascinated. Just go ahead. Oh, yeah, I don't even care if you're faking it. That feels great. Now we're going to do that for Kathy Turner, because I happen to know she has a big dream, not just about that house on the beach, but a huge dream for herself, her community, her life. And we're going to listen to her and we're going to all jump in with this amazing, generous listening. So I want you to start with this phrase, Kathy. I want you to think about this. What seems impossible? I'm talking about impossible, highly unlikely but if it were possible, would transform your work, your team, your business, your company, your life for the better. And then we're all going to practice the generous listening, starting with Yvonne and then Helen, then me, Yvonne, Helen, me, we'll just circle through like that. Kathy, what seems highly unlikely or impossible, but if it were possible, would be like, woohoo, yeah, baby. Well, for me, it would be buying my dream house on or near the beach in Santa Cruz, paying full outright cash for it mm. and being able to decorate it the way I want with custom cabinets and you know nice countertops, um, a, maybe a pool, a jacuzzi. Yeah, of course a pool. Oh, no, no, a, ja a pool, yeah, a jacuzzi, a, great a idea. infrared sauna. Oh, a great idea. And um, also finding the man of my dreams. I'm talking about 
Mm, six, two, six, three. Wow. Um, very intelligent, wow. emotionally available. Who owns um, a house by the beach? Who oh, owns a house by the beach? Tell who has more. Set up as a business, so it's only a spa one day, uh, uh, yeah, uh, exactly. one weekend a year for yeah. the mastermind group that will pay Thank thousands you. and thousands of dollars yes. just to come. Yes, yes. Awesome. From such a yes. wonderful definitely. Company. And yes, <laughs> and what else, Kathy? What else? Tell us more. Um. Also, my coaching business that I I plan to get into after I um, receive my diploma or certificate yes. in functional medicine coaching. Oh, tell, tell gonna, us more. Uh, well, I am going to get my certificate and I'm going to open up my own business and have a plethora of clients to help all, all over the world Wonderful. With, them, with, with their health issues and in the process of working on my health issues too. Wonderful. Beautiful. Wonderful. And what? Then what? Oh, I will be able to travel to Ooh. Italy. Ooh. I've always wanted to go to the Amalfi Coast. And oh. I am going to bring my girlfriend, Yvonne, because I know oh. she loves Italy, too. Oh. And I'll bring Kimberly and Helen and anybody else who wants to come because Tell us we are going to have the hell of a time. Those Italian men are going to be loving on us. <laughs> yes. No. Just let's just pause there. Now, do you notice when we listened to her, what happened? What did you notice? Helen, what did you notice when we listened to Kathy's dreams and we we said, sure, we piled on with more? Yeah, it just gets bigger, it unfolds, it just starts blooming. <laughs> blooming. And now growing and blooming. You, Helen and Yvonne, did you think of ideas of how to help her, perhaps? And and Kathy, did your did your dream, I asked you to talk about something that was impossible or seemed impossible. By the end of your discussion, was it starting to seem like, well, maybe it's not impossible? You know, I'm about to get my passport and <laughs> pack my bag and get to Italy. <laughs> now, I want you to notice, and we only listened to her for about two or three minutes. And in two or three minutes of saying yes to her dreams, she went from something that was impossible to, well, wait a second. It's just waiting for budget approval. <laughs> we we get to get the passport. So mm -hmm. in two or three minutes, that's the power we have to transform. Now, Helen, would you like to experience this? Yes. All right. So we're going to have Helen talk about what seems impossible. But if it were possible, woohoo, it would transform her life, her dreams, her goals, whatever. What seems impossible, and it has to seem impossible, Helen, but if it were possible, woo, because I want you to experience that shift. Go ahead, lay it on us. <clears throat> What's impossible is that I can turn my fire hose down enough so that I don't alienate people that have so many possibilities, like cruise ships that are sitting idle. That could be places for re-entry programs and sanitation, just like wow. any hospital. And then Tell we can go to any port, oh, you know, and oh my goodness. And we can have the food available. And oh, we can yeah. make sure that the people are vetted through Be Connect so that yeah. no man that isn't a Christian, that isn't good, you know, that didn't love or ready somebody so much and he needs to heal from the horrible ways. Sure, let's people. get them all healed. Let's mm, yes, them all healed. yes. That's, that's a great idea. Says, oh my gosh, Helen, that's just another pie in the sky. That great oh, don't you go there. Tell us, tell us more. Like tell us sure all that food is organic. No, that yes. Yep. We got the cruise ships. We got them all going into all the ports. We're providing food and shelter and it's wonderful good times. And eco, um, you know, eco uh, friendly. Great idea. Well, definitely. That are made great out idea. of palm leaves. Yes. yes. Palm leaves. Yes. Great palm leaves, idea. Everybody. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. So now I just want you to notice how. And they'll be dancing. Yes, they'll be always, dancing. We'll have our props. You, you cannot stop her. She's <laughs> got the bug, the possibility bug now. So now this is what happens. And just because my minutes. father was a research scientist, a physicist, a geologist who yes. did archaeology and geology of Mexico, exploratory travel <laughs> vacations. And he taught his little preschooler how to hand him the instruments, the tools that he needed, oh, and shine the light in the right there. place. 
let's not go there. So many of us, when we go back to our childhood, do not find anything that makes our dreams. No, happy. it was so wonderful. <laughs> I, and I had to become a nurse. Oh, Helen, get your own show. Come on. Get your own show. And <laughs> tell all about my your dad. childhood. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. But no, no, one no. phrase she said, Kimberly, what? shine a light in the right place. That's what we're trying to do. Oh, yes. Shine a light to keep you going, to focus yes. on your ideas and keep them yes. growing. Yes. All, all right. right. All yes, right. Yes. All right. Let's get the thumbs up, the, the quadruple thumbs up for Helen's father. <laughs> Let me get my glasses. Yeah, my mother, because during the day, I was mommy's helper. So I love cooking and gardening and taking uh, care of little kids. Yay. Great, yay. Helen. Great. Uh, Look at those thumbs up, ladies. Amazing. All right. Now, Helen, I'm going to help you Thank make you. those dreams come true. All right. Now, the first step is this. I want you, I mean, you're going to put, put you in a breakout room with Yvonne, and you're going to create a news report from the future. All right. And when you ladies come back, now, Kathy and I will be doing it here for her dream. When you ladies come back, you're going to do a news report from the future it's like, oh, BBC News. And here we are with Helen. And she is reporting from this amazing cruise ship. And she has transformed blah, blah, blah. And you're going to talk about it as if it's already happened. And here's the key. Powerful, positive, present tense. The three Ps. And Yvonne's going to help you. P, P, P. Yep, P, P, P. And she'll, you know, so you two plan that. And Kathy and I will plan ours. And we'll share those together. News from the future. Headlines and stories all positive, powerful, and told in the present tense as if it's already happened. All right. I guess, Yvonne, right. would you be willing to do the honors of taking Helen away into a breakout room just for about maybe three or four minutes? Okay. You can always That's keep them okay. open until you're ready to come back if you're not done. All right. So all right. I'm going to send... Helen to room one and I'll join you there in a minute Helen okay, okay. in a few seconds thank you so much for playing along and doing this experiment okay I'm gonna ah. join Helen I'll see you guys in a bit and if you're watching the video you get your dream ready you play along with us just like okay us. has Helen joined I'm going no Kathy Kathy, you're the one who's going to get to uh, be interviewed. So I would like to interview you. Now, give me some hints. Like, what are some of the headlines that you'd like to see? Um, in my future? Yes. Okay. So if I was interviewing you in the future, just give me like three headlines that you would love to see said about you in the newspaper or on the TV or in the latest online news. Young African-American woman purchased um, the house on West Cliff Drive for $7 million and she paid outright cash for it. All right, cool. All right. I don't know. So, so, okay, that's one. Now, what about the headline about your functional medicine business? Uh, young lady is... Um, Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Come on. Catherine Turner is crushing it with um, her clients. She's just racking up clients for her functional medicine coaching business like crazy. Okay, good. <laughs> now, give me a headline about that man of your dreams. Um, <laughs> is the wedding being announced, perhaps? She found the one. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to interview you. Here we are today with Catherine Turner, an amazing, amazing citizen in our community who has just purchased an incredible home. Catherine, please tell us about this home that you've purchased. Well, Kimberly, you know, one of the day I was driving by on West Cliff Drive and I was just dreaming and I happened to look over and I see this house and there was a for sale sign. So I pulled over. And went and checked it out and I said you know what I'm gonna make it happen so oh. I contacted my realtor and told him I want that house and he made it happen for me I got that house and 
<laughs> and I, it's a nice house. It's not, you know, super big or anything. It's about three bedrooms, three and a half baths. Yeah. It's got a um, balcony that overlooks the, the ocean. And it's got a nice little backyard with a, a, a jacuzzi and a, um, a lap pool. Mm-hmm. And um, it also has a little vegetable garden. So it's a perfect, and it has a Meyer lemon tree and a pomegranate tree, two of my favorite fruits. <laughs> yeah, so. tell us more because I heard that you're really an expert in functional medicine and health and well being. And that's actually part of what allowed you to financially afford this amazing home. Can you tell us more about that business? This- yeah, my functional medicine coaching business has been booming for the last five years. Um, I, I'm getting clients like crazy. I'm getting actually um, one young lady I met at um, one of my friend's um, anniversaries. She's a musician and she introduced me to some of her friends who are musicians. And next thing you know, I'm having all these famous people and I'm coaching them on how to, you know, just get their life together and their future goals and health and fitness. And it's just been an amazing ride and I am enjoying it. I and, heard um, you healed people that were considered unhealable. Permanent yes, ill, yes, and yes. They are healed. And I heard yes. one of your benefactors actually sent you a million dollars as a thank you gift. It was, yes. how, what, how did you oh react? My goodness, that, was, that, that was like one of the greatest things that ever, one of the greatest thank yous I've ever received in my life, you know. We and, won't say the name, but it was. A I won't say the name, many, but. Many Grammy Awards, okay. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. No, so she's oh, on the road to health and um, healing much better after yeah. her, her um, diagnosis with multiple sclerosis. Ah, uh, mm. yes. Now, yes. Kathy, there's one more thing, and I might be getting a little too personal here, but I hear you're not moving into that home alone. No, I'm moving in with a really wonderful guy. He's a, he's been a, um, a, a, a force in my life for the last few years, and very, very supportive. Um, he has his own money and everything, but he's just been just amazing, just a sweet person and kind. And he's a great, you know, great friend, great lover. Yeah. And he's a, <laughs> excuse me. And he's um, really good to my son. He's taken my son under his wing and, you know, they go out and play basketball together because he used to play um, basketball professionally. Oh. back in the day so was he you know. also one of your clients for the functional medicine and yeah he was <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah he I mean, was i know you always said don't mix business and pleasure but it seems like you found the perfect mixture there yes yes <laughs> that's Kathy, true it has been amazing amazing to hear your story and you know just in a few short years all of these things have transformed your life what, was, what advice would you give to others who, you know, they have a dream, but maybe it seems too big or their family thinks it's they're dreaming ridiculous dreams. Well, what advice would you give to others following in your path? Well, I always think of um, the things that were impossible that people said that were impossible. And I always think of um, two people, two, two people, two situations, the Wright brothers. You know, back in the day, they said, oh no, there's no way that anybody can fly. All but right. They did it. Yeah. And also Barack Obama. All right. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful interviewing you. Let's give her a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. right. <laughs> so I'm going to pass to Yvonne and have her and Helen debrief what happened for them. Oh, except I want, I was in on a little bit late on this press release, and I'd really like to hear what Kathy oh. Turner's success because mm-hmm. I um, yeah. want to make sure that um, I'm bringing one of the people to Obama and Michelle, I want to dance with them at that. Well, party. you're going to see it all when you re- watch the recording, Helen. You're going to get uh, to see okay. it all. <laughs> all right. So, so Helen, we know that you have this great, wonderful dream of how to help society by repurposing cruise ships, and for health reasons, for bringing food to the needy. And you've been doing this successfully for one year. 
So tell us all about it and how you're celebrating this one year anniversary. Well, I'm just so grateful that all our partners could be here to see this. I mean, when we show the before and afters, the, the, the homeless people, the people that needed dental work. So all our partners, the smile and the, the people that came aboard with the mental, uh, uh, the mental and the physical health, um, that the, the silver lining to the COVID was that it really taught people their self-responsibility in their own health health and wellness. So it's just so gratifying that, that now cruising has a whole new meaning, uh, that retirement can be any day in every way, that we've got collaborative innovators aboard, people that took the action because they were tired of the injustices. And uh, so to us to repurpose and have the green woman for wealth for all, and that is eco healthy family friendly and the woman stands for the wellness oriented mutual aid network that gives the positive tax benefits to all the, the people that had cash flow, uh, you know, and uh, we couldn't be, I mean, heaven on earth when, you know, when I said the Lord's prayer as a little girl. Who would have thought that in my lifetime, by the age of 67, I would be able to say, thank you, God, your plan was amazing. And I'm just so grateful that I am a child of God and that I had such wonderful parents that kept me around such wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. and do people. So I just want to thank everybody that, um, that played the yes and game when it came to the bold justice people down here in Hollywood, Florida, the, yes. the Broward uh, organized leaders doing justice when awesome. everybody collaborates awesome. and uses this Zoom enterprise and plays the Everyone Counts game show. You know, that flowed that intellectual property that I that I got the lawyer, you know, that finally oh, protected my Helen, 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 this That's is wonderful. Sorry to cut you off. I'm, and you forgot I'm a to fire mention, hose. you see how I know, happy I am. <laughs> but you forgot to mention it's also your birthday week. So this one year anniversary of the program you created comes on top of your birthday. So that's double Happy celebration. Birthday. Yes. Happy you know birthday. What? It comes actually on the first day of spring and then also my father's birthday without N. Paul Stuckey, that research scientist, that Mennonite boy that was uh, played the trumpet. He was actually, he reminds me so much <laughs> to Kimberly uh, I don't know, <laughs> wifing, uh, whiffing, how do you say it? Ah, who cares, Hayley. just call me Hayley. <laughs> awesome. Um, because, yeah, he was a can-do, a very detail-oriented, had the humanitarian's heart, and you don't too often find all that combination now, of spiritual oh, scientists. So. Let me just, awesome. let's just notice here. Do you see? No, I, I love it. Helen is a dream volcano. She <laughs> is erupting with amazing, amazing possibilities. Oh, and look at my friends from the Sunflower State that came out to support this little girl wait, from Kansas. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Your come on. Are in Kansas. Kansas is a state of mind okay. and Old McDonald's Oasis. I'm so glad that got also syndicated. That's now bringing in another stream of income. All right. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you something that's going to help you when you leave this recording, when you leave this experience that you can move towards these dreams. Okay, I'm going to show something from my life. 1995, I was asked to write down my purpose. And this is the original paper. It's all faded. <laughs> Someone said, what's your purpose, Kimberly? My purpose? And she had listened to me generously and said, sure, why not? Interesting. Tell me more. And I wrote down creating community everywhere. I'm creating a community of people committed to our mutual benefit and sharing our excesses. Now, if you want to make your dreams come true like mine have, the next step on this journey is you go ahead and make yourself a collage. Go and grab pictures and make a collage of the future. You pick a date, 5, 10, 15 years in the future, and you grab what grabs you and you put together a vivid image that captures what words cannot. And you turn this news report from the future into something that you can look at. And then you print it out and hang it on your wall, or you even make it with, just make it in paper to begin with. You hang it on your wall and you look at it every day. And that is going to be capturing your goals and dreams in a way that words fail us. So this is what I'd like you to do, thinking from the future. And then 
if you do this step, the next step is to reach out to me. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say, if you knew, if you knew you were guaranteed success, if you were absolutely committed to achieving this future and you knew success was guaranteed, what would you do today? Listen. I would attend this no, session. No, 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 just let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to paste this into the chat. I see that it's, it's really important. <laughs> if you knew you were absolutely committed to success, guaranteed success, <laughs> I'll put it in the chat. Go ahead. I'll, I'll... Sweetheart, you are preaching to the choir. I have all spent right, my whole life right. following this pattern, and that's why I know it works. All right. All right. So reach this out is to me. fun and I funny be... because it involves Amelia Earhart's finest work and global peace with inner peace, and I get back to flying so I can finally get my pilot's license this year and yes, get my plane it. finished. You go, building. girl. I know. Yes. Helen I mean, is raring to go, go, go. Is already made. It is yes. in photos. It's the phono journalism. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. Do all right, Helen. All right, Helen. All right. So okay. we have one more minute left here. And so what I'd like to say, I would like to get a nice picture with everybody. Let's get a picture of us feeling like our dreams have come true. Living our excess oh, I gotta, to dream. I got to hop up and get my, my oh, hop up and get it, Helen. Okay. You go and get Hurry it. Back. Right. Okay. Hurry back. Hurry we'll, back. We'll, we'll be shouting and cheering you while you're gone. All right. We're going to all be here. We're going to show what it feels like. Because the first step of creating our dreams is to have the courage to say them. And then the next step is to have a thinking partner who says, sure, why not? I can imagine you with that bold, crazy dream. I, I think it could happen. And here's a few things to step Dollar up. Dollar signs, baby. All right. There's <laughs> Amelia Earhart. Yes. She is not God. joking. All, All right. right. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, I love it. Beautiful, lady. I got it. Beautiful. Bravo. Well, you, so I could I just, have grabbed my Hawaiian dress, but... So I just want to say the final, the final moments we have here is that the first step in creating your dreams is having the courage to say your dreams. And I will read something from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow line, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore dream and discover. Thank you so much.